déjà le Gabon par rapport au bassin du Congo. De un, déjà c'est un pays qui n'a jamais subi de, de conflit. Notre point fort aussi, euh, c'est couvert à 80% de forêts. Il y a des sujets qui n'ont jamais été. Euh, euh, L'homme n'a jamais mis pied. Voilà, déjà, en fait, c'est tout. La majorité, c'est intact. In 2005, Gabon designated 11% of its land to be protected as national parks. Over the years, camera traps have helped peek into the wildlife of this densely forested and sparsely populated country. Um, we recently completed, uh, together with other partners in the Lope National Park um, and surrounding landscapes, uh, yeah, a massive grid, uh, you know, using 200 camera traps over an area of 7,000 square kilometers. Uh, these cameras were left up there for one year and produced several hundred thousand camera trap images. If you're using camera traps at this scale um, with, with data sets this large, going through the photos manually is no longer an option. I mean, you know, you would have the, the answers to the questions that you were answering uh, many months later. Um, and, uh, and this is, you know, when we started this, this uh, or, or basically accelerated the use of AI for processing camera trap images. So that started around 2007. 2018 in central uh, Gabon. Just decades ago, studies at the scale of what's happening in Gabon weren't possible. But in 2022, computers are powerful enough to run artificial intelligence software that eliminates blank, animalless footage and can suggest what species are popping up in a photo. Some of this AI software works offline for use in the field where internet connectivity is tough. Other platforms like Wildlife Insights lets people upload photos into their system to process them in the cloud. Jonathan Palmer, a founding member of the Wildlife Insights platform, works on leveraging tech for conservation purposes. 15 years ago, you know, AI and, and sort of computer vision, they were just becoming sort of services that were gonna, everyone knew was gonna become available, but we really, we didn't know how they would be, be applied. So, you know, what's been exciting is a whole raft of technologies have moved over, not to just be solutions that are, that are robust, but are scalable. Now, researchers are also testing real-time systems so that they can get alerts when a camera trap takes a photo of an animal or poacher. In the past, researchers would only get to their camera trap footage months later, which wasn't very helpful for anti-poaching efforts. Real-time alert systems are changing that, and they can have multiple applications. Hack the Planet, an organization based in the Netherlands, is working with researchers in Gabon to develop and test a real-time system that has the potential to reduce human-elephant conflict. Uh, the, the trees in the forest in uh, Gabon are producing less fruit uh, due to climate change, so you get hungry elephants. And these elephants, they break into plantations, uh, destroy crops, the camera is triggered by an animal walking by, so for let's say an elephant, then it immediately sends out a message. If it's something of interest, it can send a message through a satellite network, no matter where this system is deployed anywhere in the world. If it has a view of the sky, it can uh, send uh, an alert. Though camera trap technology is rapidly advancing, there are still privacy and security concerns around the images being captured. Camera trap data is very sensitive, especially with regards to forest elephants. You know, you could even you can identify places if, if you wish, you know, of, if there's one individual with one really nice task, it could potentially mm -hmm. attract you know, poachers to an area. So yes, we never associate the GPS position with the image mm -hmm. in itself. It does have issues uh, for security and um, so definitely that needs to be avoided. So what we always do before putting out a camera trap array in an area that is maybe not too far away from a community, um, we go to see the elders of that community and sit down, you know, with a, with a bunch of our camera traps in our hands, basically explain, you know, the, the units, um, explain what we're doing, that this is really just about the, the wildlife in their area, not about, about the people. Um, if they want to, uh, we always offer to send, um, you know, younger people from that community with us um, to, to direct us where the camera traps are placed. Though researchers have to be careful with camera trap data, camera traps remain a key tool for Gabon's conservation efforts. 